हेलो स्टूडेंट्स आई एम योर होस्ट मंजू चावला दिस टाइम आई हैव कम अप विद द वेरी फर्स्ट लेसन ऑफ लेमिंगो बुक ऑफ क्लास ट्वेल्थ द लास्ट लेसन बाय एल्फोंस डॉडेट द लास्ट लेसन इज सेट इन द डेज ऑफ द फ्रेंको पर्शियन वॉर व्हिच वाज फॉट फ्रॉम 1870 टू 1871 अंडर द लीडरशिप ऑफ बिस्मार्क Persia defeated France in this war and districts of Alsace and Lorraine which were in France passed into Persian hands the two protagonists of the story Amhamel and France belonged to Alsace Amhamel was a French teacher at a school and France is one of his students The story revolves around how the war proves to be a life altering event for both. Dear students, before commencing the summary of the story, I would like to tell you something about the author Alphonse Daudet. He was born in 1840 in Nimes, southern France. He was a French novelist and short story writer who started his career as a school teacher during the franco-persian war which had a profound effect on his writing he enlisted in the french army france lost the war and his failing health forced him to go back to writing for the rest of his life he died in the last decade of 19th century in 1897 now let's have a look at the summary of the lesson france started for school very late that morning his french teacher am hamel had announced that he would question the class on participles poor france did not know even a single word about them and was afraid of a scolding from the teacher it was a bright sunny day and for a moment france thought of running away and spending the day outside the chirping of the birds and the marching of the persian soldiers was much more tempting than the rules of participles however france was able to fight the temptation and hurried off to school on the way when france passed the whole town he noticed a crowd in front of the bulletin board for the past two years all the bad news had come from it and france thought about what the matter was this time as he was moving fast the blacksmith called out to him and said that there was plenty of time to reach the school franz thought that he was making fun of him and reached the school panting when franz reached the school he was very surprised to find that everything was quiet usually when the school began there would be a great commotion and activity Franz had often counted on the commotion to get to his desk unnoticed but that day everything was as quiet as it was on Sunday morning Franz noticed that all of his classmates were already sitting in their seats and M Hamel was walking up and down with his ruler under his arm He had to open the door and reach his seat in front of everybody. He was blushing and was very frightened. What surprised and confused him more was that instead of scolding him, M Hamel spoke very kindly to him and told him to take his seat. After Franz had calmed down, he noticed that M Hamel was wearing a special attire which he wore only on special occasions the whole school was so strange 
and a seriousness prevailed in the atmosphere. But what surprised and confused him most was to see the village people sitting quietly on the back benches. They all looked very sad. Franz was still wondering as he observed the changes around him. When M. Hamel mounted on his chair and made a dreadful announcement, he told the class that it was their last French lesson. He further said that the order had come from Berlin to teach only German in the schools of Alsace and Lorraine and he would be leaving the school next day. The words of the teacher were a shock to little Franz. Now he remembered the gathering at the town hall and the reason for their gathering. Franz was totally shocked by the sudden turn of events. He regretted not having learnt his lessons when there was still time. There was sudden change in his emotions. He thought that he would not be able to learn his language any more. He had wasted his precious time. His books, which were a nuisance to him, suddenly felt like old friends. The thought that M. Hamel was going away and Franz would never see him again made him forget about how cranky M. Hamel was. M. Hamel then criticized the people of Alsace for putting, their, putting off learning as it was their habit for some time in the future. He blamed the parents for not taking interest in studies of their children. He also blamed himself as he sent the students to water his plants or gave them a holiday when he had wanted to go fishing. M. Hamel then talked about the French language. He called it the most beautiful language. He also called the language the clearest and the most logical language in the world. He wanted the people of France to treasure their language. According to him, whenever the people of a particular nation are enslaved, as long as they are attached to their language, it is as if they have the key to their prison. After this, Am Hamel opened a grammar book and taught them their last lesson. Franz was amazed to see that he understood everything that day. Even M. Hamel had explained everything with so much patience. After that, they had a lesson in writing. Everyone was immersed in their work. Even the little children sitting in the class were tracing their fish hooks as it was French too. Everybody became emotional towards the end. Some even started crying. But M. Hamel had the courage and patience to hear every lesson to the last. Finally, as the church clock struck 12, M. Hamel stood up. It was very evident that he had become emotional too. He tried to speak but choked. Then he turned to the blackboard and wrote as large as he could, Vive la France, which means long live France. He then dismissed the class signaling everyone to leave. Dear students, in a nutshell, this lesson raises the dominant theme in the text that is linguistic chauvinism, which refers to the imposition of one language 
on others. You know, dear students, language is considered to be the cultural identity of the people who use it. The language is the pride of the country as it defines the cultural history. The story also depicts the irony of the whole situation about how people feel when they don't learn their own language. Spontaneous reaction of Fran saying, Will they make them sing in German? Even the pigeons is totally relevant to the situation that when even the birds and animals can't be forced to abandon their language, then what forces man to enforce a language on others? Here ends the explanation of the lesson, dear students. I hope that I would have come up to your expectations and have been able to make this lesson comprehensive for you. Thank you, students.